Hello everybody, welcome back to the show. We are doing VR tutorials in Unity 2018. And uh, in our last tutorial, we learned how to set up our virtual reality environment. So if you followed along with that one, you should have a scene just like this. And what we are going to do today is we are going to learn how to fly. Well, at least halfway. So if you look here at your main camera, what we want to do is, in VR, if you tilt your head to the right, we want it to move right. If you tilt your head to the left, we want to move left. So, in order to do this, first we need to create ourselves a player. So we're going to create a new game object and call it player. We're going to put the main camera in there. And we need to make sure that our main camera is tagged as the main camera. Excellent. That is very essential for later. Now. What we're going to do is we're going to use the transforms of this main camera to move the player. So we're going to create a script and give it to the player. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Uh, create a C-sharp script, and we're going to call it Flight Master. <laughs> Flight Master. Okay, and open that up. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, so... In order to make things move left and right, we have a whole bunch of coordinates to keep straight in our head. And I'll try to make it as easy as possible, but just know that it does it, it does make sense, it's just in a roundabout way. Okay, so we don't need this start, uh, but we will need a, let's see, private float VR roll, okay? There we go. We're going to need that, and then we are going to need a couple if statements. All right, but... All right, before we get into that, let's take a look again. All right? Go ahead and select your main camera, and then look at over here on rotation, this Z. Okay? Now, we want to move our player along this x-axis. Okay? So if you look over in the corner, you can see the x over here. And uh, when it goes into the positive, it moves right. When it goes into the negative, it moves left. So what we want to do is we want to create something. If we want to go right, or, um, I'm sorry, if we want to go left, we need something to make this X go down, and that'll pull us left. And likewise, if we add to it, it'll pull us to the right. Excellent. Okay, so having said that, click on your main camera and look at this. This is your Z rotation, okay? Now, if we hit play, <clears throat> and using our GVR editor emulator to uh, simulate the movement of tilting your head, hold down control, and if we move our mouse to the left, it tilts our camera to the right, and if we move our mouse to the right, it tilts our camera to the left, okay? So we can see that the Z perfectly up and down is zero and then if we moved to the left which is pushing the mouse to the right but tilting our head to the left our numbers increase okay and right about there is about 20 degrees all right over here is negative 20 okay so even though it says 20 and negative 20 this moves in uh, a counterclockwise circle. So why, if we were tilting this way, would this be positive, and if we we're tilting this way, this would be negative? Because we're literally moving our mouse right now. In VR, we're going to be moving our head, but it's still going to be simulating the same mouse movement, which means it's going to be using the same, uh, the same type of numbers. However, we are dealing with a sphere, uh, with a complete circle here. So when we see uh, negative 20, it doesn't actually mean it's negative 20 degrees, it means it is actually uh, 340 degrees, okay? Because zero is also 360. I made a diagram here. All right, here we go. And here we go. I made a little diagram that shows that the top of the circle is zero to 360, and then by tilting our head, we go around in a counterclockwise fashion. So there's a 90 degree angle, 100, uh, 180 opposite, 270, another right angle, and then three back to 360. So you would think that, okay, well, anything above zero 
just make my guy go left, and anything below 360, make him go to the uh, right. Well, that would work. That would actually work. Uh, but the problem is, is that even if you were able to keep your head perfectly, perfectly still, like right here in the middle, perfectly still, your ship would still wobble off and veer to one side or the other because there is nothing between 0 and 360. I mean, it just, just goes back and forth. So, uh, what we are going to do is give our camera... Uh, about 40 degrees of fudge room, so you can move your head just a little bit and not have to worry about your camera sending you off into the twilight zone. So, 40 degrees of freedom, 20 on each side, so we want to go from 20 to 80. Now, 60 degrees is way more than we need, but it's here just to prove a point. Okay, I could have gone easily to 90, it didn't really matter. Um, but this is what we're doing. We're giving 60 degrees of, of, um, of mobility. Uh, so but any, any number between 20 and 80, we want to move us. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump back in here and let's set this up. So if, parentheses, brackets, there we go. Okay, so if our VR roll, okay, if that roll is greater than or equal to 20, you got to make sure you put your numbers here in parentheses of their own, okay? So if it is better, if it's bigger than 20, and it is uh, less than 80, less than or equal to 80, can't forget your parentheses, okay? So, greater than 20, less than 80. What we're going to do is we're going to manipulate this VR roll. So, um, by attaching the script to the object, that will move the object, but we need to know how that object is being moved. Float uh, VR roll is equal to camera with a capital C. There's also a lowercase c, but I don't know what that does. Camera dot main dot transform. And what we're going to use is the Euler angles. Okay. And what angle did we see that was changing everything? It was the Z. Okay. So that was the, uh, the axis that we needed to use. All right. There we go. So now we're going to do a transform. Come on transform.translate. There we go. And we need some coordinates. So we want our x to move along the negative x axis in order to move left. Okay, zero is zero, uh, positive is positive, and negative is negative. So let's give it a negative number to move it that way. Uh, we could give it a one, but one is super fast. We want 0.1f, comma, 0f, 0f. Okay, so that's X, Y, and Z axis, okay? So it's going to move 0.1F every frame because we're in the update, okay? And we can test this out, as a matter of fact. So debug.log, and we are going to call this um, moving or leaning left, okay? and save. All right, that should work. Let's go in here and look and see what we've got. So we hit play. Oh yes, it won't do anything because we haven't put our script into the player yet. My bad. So we're going to take our, our script right here and we are going to move it onto our player. Okay. Our player is what is going to be moved around. And then our main camera is the, the thing that is the engine behind its movement, so we don't really need to think too difficultly about that. Uh, so let's test this out. All right, so if we hold down the control button, it should change this number, but it should also move us this way. So uh, we turn it this way, and we can see that we're getting into the negative. Now we move the positive, and once we hit 20, something should happen. All right, we moved. Excellent, guys. 
let's go back into our script and go ahead and copy this. Control C, Control V, and then let's change this to. Uh, did I say leaving? Oh my gosh. My bad. There we go. Leaning. My gosh. That's terrible. Okay, so we want it to go the other way, so we're going to give it positive x. All right, that's good. And we need to change this. So, I, uh, it's not going to work as like negative twenty and negative eighty. It just doesn't. You know, you have to use the full three hundred and sixty degrees. So, what that is is less than three forty. Okay less than 340, but still greater than 270. Or, I'm sorry, 280. All right, so as long as it's between 340 and 280, 280, 340, so as long as it's over here, <laughs> my, uh, there we go. That's weird. I love it when it does that. Okay, so anyway, as long as it's within those areas, then it's allowed to move. So we'll come back here. That's good. That's good. Excellent. And we'll test this. Save. Come back over here. Hit play. All right. Hold the control button. All right. There we go. We can now fly back and forth. Awesome. And here's a, here's a funny thing, too. Uh, let's take... What is this? The only cube here? Let's bring it down just a tiny bit. And let's add that flight script to it, too. Oh, oh it's still moving it out. Well, did I not change my player settings? No, I never zeroed out my player settings. Oh my gosh. That is such a rookie mistake. Can't believe you did that, bro. Can't believe you, man. And, yay! <laughs> so if you wanted to have this in third person and have a ship that followed you around when you moved your stuff, this is how you would do that. So there you go. Uh, now, because we're running a corridor, we want to make sure that uh, we are have some boundaries, okay? Because otherwise we're just going to fly off into eternity and we don't want the ha that to happen. So uh, what we'll do is we'll come in here to the top and if we look at this cube, okay, if we move it over here, it's going to go into the negative. So let's move it to negative 10x, okay? Uh, hit control D. Control D. Come on. Cube, control D. There we go. And then drag that over to the positive 10. So 10. Grab both of your cubes. Control D. And then move that out. Again. Control D. Move that out. So what we're doing is giving ourselves a, a, a makeshift corridor. Okay? There we go. So if we were to hit play, this is just a visual thing. This is not going to actually stop us. Okay. So there we go. That is a visual cue to let us know that is the bounds that we want to be able to fly within. So let us create a new, or well, some more script. So what we want is we want to do something like check bounds. Oops. There should be a K there because that's proper spelling. Check bounds. All right, and, oops, sorry, that needs that. We are going to create a new subroutine. Now, I don't know if I should be calling them voids or if I'm allowed to call them subroutines, but come on, man, it's a subroutine. When I was a kid, uh, I programmed in Visual Basic, so or not Visual Basic, but Basic, QBasic, Liberty Basic, and then Visual Basic. And uh, we just got used to calling it uh, subroutine, because that's kind of what it was. Okay, so here we go. Now, 
we need an if statement, obviously. So we already know that this is negative 10 and this is positive 10. So what we need to do is say, okay, well, if our camera gets to negative 9, it should stop so that it doesn't hit the wall. And if it gets to positive 9, it should stop so it doesn't hit the wall. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, if parentheses and brackets. So if our camera with capital C, camera dot main dot transform dot position dot x <laughs> is less than and we want negative nine, right? So if it's less than negative nine, it means that uh, if it went past negative nine, it would be negative 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, etc. Okay, so if it goes past negative nine, what we want it to do is stay there. And the best way to do that is transform dot local position, okay, equals a new vector three. All right, and with this vector three, we have a set of coordinates we can put it at. So we want negative nine f to be our first coordinate because we want negative nine f on the x-axis and then zero f on the y, comma, zero f. All right, and then we will put a semicolon there and we will do a debug dot log and we will say hit left wall. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and check that real quick. Control S. Okay, and boom. So let's look at our console just to make sure. There we go. Hit left wall. So if we did that, oh, we can see that number still building. And now we can go this way, and we can go as long as far as we want. There's nothing stopping us now, but over here, there most certainly is. Okay, so we've got that. That's good. And go back into your code. Do the same thing that we did before. Control C, Control V, and we're going to just change the numbers here change the positive, change the negative to a positive, and the left to a right. My name is Alan Rickman. Good night. All right, so there we go. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, I uh, It's like 90 degrees inside of here, inside of my trailer, and I've been trying to record this show for three days now, so... Um, if I'm a little loopy, that's why. So here we go. Okay, so now let's test this. This should be good. All right. Oh, I glitched out of it. What did I do? Oh, that's where it is. I forgot to change this. See, you guys, you always got to check your stuff. Always, always, always check everything. All right. I should cut that out, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it in warts and all because... You know, when you're coding, things don't always go the way you plan. It's not always pretty, so kind of just have to roll with that. So, if anybody can point me in the direction of how to clean up these kind of numbers, because I'm assuming that, you know, if these debug objects are here and called so many times, what else am I missing? You know, I mean, come on, uh, there's got to be something else in here. So anyhow, we have the ability to fly left and right now, and, oh, did you see that? So if we go past, so look at the rotation of the camera here. So check out this Z. If we go past 80 in our attempt to move, uh, you'll see that it stops moving. Oh, see that? Go back to 80. Uh, uh, <laughs> there we go. Same thing over here. If it goes past, if it goes below 280 or in this case, just 80. <laughs> there you go. 
All right, so there it is. That's how it works. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys had a fun time. I know I did, uh, even though it took me, you know, 47 different uh, attempts to record this. Um, I don't know. I'm just one of those weird people that uh, really enjoys trying to do their tutorial in one take. Uh, I wasn't able to do that on the last one, but I think I... I think I may have managed it with this one, so I'm going to watch this over, and if it turns out that I did everything good in one take, I will release it as a single file without any editing, uh, because I have to edit in Blender, and Blender is a beautiful program, don't get me wrong, but editing inside of Blender is just... Oh, it's, it's a nightmare. Um, for now, for now, it'll get easier, I'm sure. I'm sure it'll get easier. But anyhow, uh, so we learned how to do that. In the next episode, we are going to learn how to fly up and down uh, by looking up and down, okay? And, um, you know, the, the tilting your head to move thing is not as weird as you would think. I've tested it out on a lot of people, and it actually just is more intuitive to do it that way. Uh, but if we had a controller, definitely we'd put that on the thumbstick. So anyhow, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.